Hey, what is going on, all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Sir George Cayley, born on 27th of December, 1773, and lived until 1857 when he died at the ripe old age of 83, was an English inventor. Sir George was fascinated by the concept of flying and throughout his lifetime created several ideas and designs of flying machines. Although none of Sir George's flying machines ever took to the skies, down the road the Wright brothers actually gave Sir George Cayley credit for much of his research and data as they were crucial to the Wright brothers during their design of the first airplane that actually did take flight. Now despite the fact that Sir George was never able to produce a powered aircraft that could fly, he did learn and gained a lot of useful knowledge and understanding of all the different forces that a plane had to be able to endure as well as the pilot flying it. Now in 1804, Sir George was able to successfully fly an unpowered glider that he'd been working on and little did he know that one of the safety features he had added to that glider would be something that the entire world would be using today. And that, my friends, is the seat belt. Between 1940 and the late 1950s, cars and automobiles were the latest fashion in the US. It was a time where the car you sat in defined who you were, almost just as much as the clothes you wore. But the one thing that was debatable amongst Americans was the use of the seat belt. In 1964, a letter published from some who were opposed to safety belt stated, as long as the life risked is his own, I believe the individual should decide whether or not to use safety belts is wise. There was so much resistance to seat belts that car companies that started implementing seat belts into newer model vehicles were met with fierce backlash from the public. In 1956, only 2% of Ford buyers chose to purchase the seat belt option. In 1961, the state of Wisconsin made history as it became the first state in the US to make seat belts mandatory in all cars. Later in 1968, the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act made seat belts mandatory in all cars across the entire country of the United States. In 1970, Australia was the first country in the world to enforce seat belt laws, where not only did cars have to have seat belts installed in them, but the driver and passengers would have to wear them by law. Well, this spread. Canada was the next to follow suit, enforcing seat belt laws in 1976, followed by the UK in 1983. Seat belts were now a thing for all cars all over the world not buses. Why not buses? Well, let's find out, shall we? Buckle up. Even today, most buses in the U.S. do not have seat belts on board. And depending on which state you live in, the laws that govern whether or not buses need seat belts or whether or not you as a passenger need to wear one during transit are different. It also depends on the type of bus. For example, city transit buses do not have seat belts at all, no matter what state you live in. Traffic safety officials justify this behind the idea that public buses used in urban areas tend to travel relatively slower and often in dedicated bus lanes. Also, they typically travel over short distances with frequent stops. On top of that, the design of many urban transit buses make it very difficult to fit seat belts on seats retrospectively. And even if they did install seat belts on public transit buses, many passengers usually stay standing on them during transit. And it'd be kind of hard to put a seat belt on while standing up. But that's different when it comes to school buses and motor coaches. As for school buses, currently only eight states in the US require school buses to be equipped with seat belts. Those states are California, Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, and Texas. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that school buses in other states do not have seat belts. It's really left up to the manufacturer and the buyer of the bus. In fact, I remember as a kid, I rode on a few school buses that did have seat belts equipped. The bus company later removed them because the school was complaining that the lap belts were being used by kids to hit other kids by swinging them and causing injuries. In fact, I kind of remember seeing that happen a few times as well. And when it comes to motor coaches, well, up until 2016, most motor coaches did not have any seat belts. So why is that? Why is it so important to have a seat belt on when you are in a car, but not in a coach bus? Why? Now what the hell is going on here? 
The Department of Transportation in the U.S. mandates that all passengers on a coach bus must have a seat. It is illegal for a passenger carrying coach bus to operate over capacity. You would be amazed at how many times I've been asked by a passenger who forgot to buy a ticket or one that was trying to get on an earlier bus that's already sold out. Excuse me, sir, can you just let me ride in the aisle or I'll just ride in the restroom. I need to get back home. Now, this might fly in some countries, but not here in the US. Unlike city transit buses where people can be crammed on board and standing, commercial passenger carrying motor coaches can only be allowed as many passengers as there are seats. According to the website science.com, transportation officials state that one of the most important features of a school bus and motor coach that makes seat belts less important for safety is something called compartmentalization. The way the seats are designed on a coach bus segregates passengers to small compartments of sort. Think of eggs in an egg carton and how they're protected from damage by keeping them segregated and divided in small compartments. The seat in front of you as a passenger is high enough and padded enough to safely stop your forward motion in case of a sudden stop or collision. Now I know some of you are saying right now, wait a minute, that doesn't solve the whole equation. What about the side collisions and what about those sitting in front without a soft seat to stop you? Another reason why seat belts are not strictly enforced on most coach buses is the fact that they're larger and heavier and have more inertia than that of a regular personal vehicle. They're also designed with more safety features than a regular passenger car as well. Also due to the fact that the passengers are sitting so much higher and the weight of the coach bus is much heavier than most of the surrounding traffic, it's assumed that passengers would be relatively safe during most collision scenarios. In 2013, it was announced by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, that starting 2016, all coach buses being built must be equipped with three-point seat belts on every seat. <laughs> About time. However, anyone owning or operating coaches older than 2016 without seat belts would not have to get any seat belts installed on board. Under the new regulations, all new motor coaches and other large buses must be equipped with three-point lap shoulder belts. But the rules do not take effect until 2016, and existing buses are not required to be retrofitted with seat belts. Older coaches built without seat belts could be grandfathered in, and an exception would be made for them in order to mitigate the cost of fleet owners having to replace a bunch of old seats on hundreds of thousands of older coaches built across the U.S. without seat belts. Some have calculated a cost between seven to ten thousand dollars per coach to retrofit a coach with seat belts. But even with that, many carriers didn't wait for the government to tell them what to do. Some of them bit the bullet and installed seat belts on coaches older than 2016 voluntarily. Another issue was the evolution of the seat belt. Many older coaches offered lap style seat belts for the driver, and many carriers had lap belts installed on passenger seats as well. You know, the type of seat belts that only went over your lap and didn't have the horizontal strap coming across your torso. During crash tests, data actually showed that older lap style seat belts proved to be more dangerous to wear than not having a seat belt at all. For those who did have lap style seat belts installed on their buses, this was yet another incentive to replace them with the new standard three point seat belts. Even back in 2009, long before any requirement of seat belts on a large bus, the well known carrier Greyhound took the lead and installed seat belts on its entire fleet. Despite the fact that all motor coaches newer than 2016 in the US are seat belt equipped, most passengers don't really have to wear them during transit if they should choose not to. Again, as mentioned before, depending on what state you live in or ride in, the law regarding the use of seat belts on a coach bus will differ. I will say that during my years of driving motor coaches, I proudly transported hundreds of thousands of passengers, if not over a million. And never once have I ever had a person ask me about a seat belt. Even since 2016, when our fleet started having seat belt equipped coaches, I very rarely see passengers use them. According to a website Capital Corridor, in the summer of 2018, the state of California passed a law that requires all drivers and passengers on commercial buses to wear a seatbelt or face a fine of $20 for the first offense and $50 for subsequent offenses. But just like wearing seatbelts in your own personal car, I don't think that law is being enforced very strictly for passengers. 
Folks, I would love to hear your opinion on seatbelts on buses, whether you own a bus company or drive for one, or if you're simply a passenger or a bus nut geek or enthusiast, please leave me a comment down below about your thoughts and experiences on seatbelts on buses. And as always, all the sources I use to do research on the topic of this video today are going to be listed down in the description box below. Also, don't forget to check out Bus and Motor Coach News. With all that's going on in the bus and motor coach industry today, there are lots of interesting topics to read about. Whether you're a diligent bus company owner or just a bus nut geek and enthusiast, be sure to keep up to date on all the important topics in the bus and motor coach industry. They also have a YouTube channel called Motor Coach Minute where you can get all the trending headlines in just under a minute. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and remember if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.